Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today is the day that you, I, and everybody else in the WeCreate community has been waiting for. This is the 40 watt diode laser from WeCreate. There are some differences from the original that I'm gonna point out, uh, like quality control and the machine uh, hardware uh, improvements. I'm gonna point those out here in just a second in a video clip, so I'll explain that in that clip in just a moment. But there's a few things that I want to go over that this one's going to be for versus the 20 watt and then what has come with this machine that hasn't came with the 20 watt, um, at least in my experience. But I keep that with a grain of salt because my original machine was a beta machine. So it came out in September. Um, so it may have been missing certain things that you may be receiving now. So with all that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and talk over about what comes with this machine first that's different. So the only real difference is, is I got a flathead screwdriver this time. I don't think there was one with mine, but I'm sure there probably is with the newer models that come out. Um, the actual pass-through or belt conveyor, I'm going to just call it a pass-through for this, um, comes with an extra attachment here. So you can attach this to the end of the... Uh, um, attachment to the pass-through and it'll go into other laser engravers that have like this little clip here so that's cool and then as far as what comes with this machine itself we get an actual physical pamphlet this time versus an online pamphlet um, and then they also come with an extra wire head for your 40 watt uh, laser head here so that's super convenient too and then last but not least the only other difference is they sent this sheet of material and it says for calibration use only. So this is gonna be if you recalibrate your camera for any reason, if it's um, out of alignment or something, that's what that is for. But other than that, everything else was pretty much identical for the most part that has came with the machine. Um, and if you haven't watched uh, their assembly on the pass-through slot, Go ahead and watch that. I didn't want to bore you guys recreating their five minute video on that, that they've already perfected. Super easy walkthrough. The only thing is, is there's a metal uh, screw part that goes right here underneath the machine. For some reason my, my screws would not go in really tight without using my own Allen wrench. Other than that, the whole process was pretty much identical to what their video was. So with that said, um, I also do have, um, I did do a test engraving with this off the machine so far. I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a video clip of that. I don't wanna bore you with that either. It's gonna be just like my 20 watt um, engraving video that I've done as well. So if you wanna see it engrave and cut, it works the exact same way, except this is gonna be for a lot more cutting. So you can cut thicker materials, you can cut a lot faster. So if you're gonna do a lot of cutting, I definitely recommend the 40 watt if you're gonna do a lot of engraving, either one works great. The 20 watt technically can do it better, but the 40 watt is still doing a really good job at engraving as well. Um, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the quality of life and improvements on the hardware that I was talking about. I've got a video clip for you guys to point out all the improvements that they've done to the hardware and overall quality of life with the machine as itself. And then we'll do that test engraving. And then finally, at the end, we're gonna try this first ever pass through slot engraving or cutting. I'm gonna just probably do a cut with that and, and watch that work. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy this new machine and we'll get into the next segment here for you. All right, you guys. So as you can see, we are now looking inside of the 40 watt We Create Vision. There's a lot of things that I wanna point out that I think they've done a lot better with quality control on this machine. First up, the most important one is let's talk about the um, the hose here. Before this bottom part right here would extend all the way out here and it would slice the bottom of this hose. It looks like they've eliminated that. I'm gonna keep an eye out on that to make sure it's not rubbing, but it doesn't look like that appears to be rubbing here. They also have a nice uh, nylon braided cable. Uh, that might be on the other one, but I haven't noticed that one on my machine. Um, the other thing is the wire management is amazing on this machine. It is, uh, it looks like they took their time to manage all of these cables and then they even have like rubber slots to make sure the cables don't get destroyed. They added a larger sticker to warn people to turn off the machine before plugging in your rotary tool as well. So the attention to detail is really nice. They even added the word up 
If I can zoom in here, it might be hard to see, but there's the word up on the actual trays itself. So you know which side is up. And they also got rid of those metal studs along the tray line itself as well. So no more uh, screws sitting there and sticking up. It just didn't look as professional. This one looks way more professional here in my opinion. And then I'm not gonna show you guys this, but I did have this on its side earlier and uh, the wire management underneath is spot on. Uh, I don't think you're even gonna need the actual uh, cable cramp that came with the um, pass-through slot, the auto pass-through for that, because the wire management is uh, is impeccable. So they did a really good job at um, quality control on this. Even on the other sides here, everything looks great. Um, they did a really good job at wire management. Everything looks like it's been updated slightly. Um, so super nice. And then I also wanted to point out the rubber seal back here. Every time I open and close my machine, it would kind of grind and it make a weird noise right from these hinges. Now they got a, a little bit of a heavier duty rubber here. It catches a lot easier, doesn't make any noise. So that's something I wanted to show you guys with build quality before we get into cutting here. One more thing I wanted to point out on build quality as well is they do have the same kind of little hinge that seems just a little bit too short to reach underneath the machine on the uh, tray itself. I wish that would have been updated, but you can always add like a little zip tie or something to the front if you need to pull that out. But I do notice that this tray is way more tighter than the uh, old tray was. So this, this won't wiggle around as much as my other machine. So just wanted to point that out as well. I also wanted to point out they have this protective peel on the top of this machine as well. So super nice. Let's get on to cutting. All right, you guys, so we're going to do a real quick test cut here. Um, the auto settings for this seems to all be for six millimeter wood as of right now of me recording. Um, so what I did is I went off custom settings that I use for my 20 watt, increased the speed just a little bit. I should probably increase it even higher, but we're going to try seven speed, 100 power. It should blow through this because usually I use five or six speed. 100 power on my 20 watt, but we're gonna just test it like this. So let's do the auto focus here. As you can see that laser dot just moved there. The machine is now gonna go down. As you can see, it is going down to match that level here. And then it's gonna to touch and it's gonna to make the actual leveled off settings here. So now that it lit back up, it's a little bit easier to see. I'm sorry about the windows reflection here. I'm going to try to do something with that in a future video. But for right now, this is what I'm working with. So we're going to go ahead and do a test print. Now we're going to just hit start. It's going to send it to the machine and I'm going to click send. And on the machine itself, I'm going to hit start. This will be the first cut ever in the test cut. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here. Sorry about the reflection once again. There we go, as you can see, that is just powering through it. Just as I expected, it works really well. All right, you guys, so as you guys can see, that cut pretty much right through, just like that, fell right through, perfect cut. Um, and if you couldn't tell, the fan ran quite a while. That's why I put a cut in this video. Um, the fan runs for probably a good 30 seconds after the cut has been made. So just a heads up on that. But overall, this is uh, awesome. It cut super clean, straight through. I don't even see a burn mark on there, which is awesome. Once again, that was seven speed, full power. If you uh, wanna use the um, a little bit under a quarter of an inch, this material is almost a quarter of an inch. So now that we got that out of the way, let's do some more test cuts here. All right, you guys, so as you can see, I've got my little design here that I'm gonna create. It's like just a small little plaque. Um, and then we're gonna put it on the actual, we create 40 watt here. As you can see, I got the test cut done already. We're going to just use all the preset settings for the scores and graves, and then the cuts. Um, I'm gonna auto focus and we're gonna have this go at it here. All right, you guys, so as you can see, I got the, uh, 40 watt all auto focus. We're ready to hit print. I'm gonna send it to the printer now. As you can see, it is now doing the engraving. I did a pretty light engraving here. 
Um, but it's still turning out wonderful for the settings that I picked. I'm just trying to make it as quick as possible for you guys so you can see the whole experience here. All right, you guys, so as you can see, now that the fan is done um, blowing out any excess fumes, uh, this cut and engraved and scored perfectly all the way through. I'm gonna go ahead and lift the lid here and lift you guys up off the lid as well so you can see this. And then we're gonna lift this piece out of here so we can get this out of here really quick. As you can see, that cut through pretty much perfect there. Um, I did do a lighter engraving. I should have done a little bit darker, but I wanted to do it as quickly as possible for you guys on this video live so you can see what it's doing. Uh, this turned out really awesome. It looks better in some lighting than the others based on how light I did that design in this type of material. But uh, overall, this is really great. It cuts perfectly. There's little to no slit, even on the back side from backflash, you got a little bit there. But overall, this looks amazing. Um, no masking tape or anything. Let's go ahead and jump into the next segment. All right, you guys, so as you can see, we got the pass-through all set up. We're ready to hit print on that button on the top right there. Before I do, I wanna let you guys know that we are on a beta software, so this is the very first test publicly, very first test that I've ever seen done on this. With that said, I did have to trick this into auto-focusing. Um, what I mean by that is I put one of the trays that are originally inside on there, set a board on top, Hit autofocus so it can actually do the focus point that is set above those trays. And since this is below the trays, it wasn't able to focus. Um, now with that said, like I said, this is beta software. So hopefully when there's a public release of the actual software, that'll be fixed for the focus point. Um, I also did a framing. It looked like it framed, but after it frames, it spits it out longwise in the back. So hopefully that'll be updated too, just some extra things to share with we create here that they can improve on the software but i wanted to be the first ever to test this out so i did trick it for the autofocus we're going to hit print i just did one sideways to see this feed in it's not really long it's just a square with a uh, score on it so let's go ahead and hit print i'm going to show you guys this working so you can hear it trying to work there and it's doing the scores now. But as you can see, it is completely out of focus here. So this just isn't going to work as of right now, but this would be the first attempt at engraving this. But as you can see, the pass-through slot is working. It is going back and forth. So once they get the autofocus figured out, um, the actual pass-through slot is going to work here. It's just the fact that my machine will not autofocus on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this for right now. But as you can see, it is spelling out Fresh Start Customs. It's just not in focus there. And now it's trying to do the cut, but since it's not in focus, it's not gonna cut. I'm gonna stop this, and then uh, we're gonna continue from there and talk about this. So that is the 40 watt WeCreate diode machine. Let's talk about the machine first and then we're gonna talk about the elephant in the room with the pass-through slot that I just mentioned here. The machine itself, 100% awesome on its own as is, ready to go. Um, it'll cut through pretty much anything. Nine millimeters thick is their auto settings that they have already pre-set up. You just select an option, it'll cut through it like butter. Um, you can probably cut a lot thicker than that too with multiple passes. So keep that in mind. The only thing it won't cut is metal. It is a diode laser. It's not going to cut through metal. So keep that in mind as well. 100% recommend this one. I probably recommend this one even over the 20 watt. But if you are going to be doing engravings only, the 20 watt is going to get a little bit better detail. So keep that in mind too. And it'll also be cheaper. So for more from the hobbyist, and this is more for the professional, um, now let's talk about the pass-through slot. As uh, I mentioned in the, the previous segment, before I even hit start, I had a feeling it was gonna fail because the autofocus was off. And uh, as you can see, it did cause this burning effect here. And all that was was a score mark, but the autofocus was so off so that beam happened larger. 
So let's talk about why this is going to happen, why I knew it's going to fail right off the bat here. Um, essentially, the software is in beta right now. I sent a beta software, and I don't know if it's actually for like a public release at this point. So I think they have the feature set to do autofocus up to the original tray. It won't autofocus down to the material. So in order to trick it and allow me to actually test the hardware for you guys, um, I had to put both trays in, put the material on top, and then do the autofocus, take both of those out, hit refresh, and that allowed me to hit start. And you're probably wondering, why am I putting this in the video for you guys? <laughs> well, the reason why is I wanna be real with you guys and with WeCreate so they can create the software and have feedback for this. Obviously, I'm gonna do a follow-up video on this as well as soon as I get a uh, software um, correction on this. And uh, it could be something that I did wrong, but I highly doubt it. It works just like the rotary tool. You drag it off the screen, hit print. Everything else worked correctly off of um, hitting print here other than the autofocus, and that's the reason why it failed. So that's why I know it's software. But if it is something that I did wrong, I will correct that in the next video with you guys too. But like I said, I don't wanna lie to my viewers and I wanna provide really good feedback to get this corrected as soon as possible for you guys. Um, but overall, the hardware we know works, as you can see in that previous clip, it does go back and forth. Um, the only other software thing that needs corrected is the framing feature. So it frames correctly, but after it frames, it spits out the amount that it framed over here on the back side without pulling it back through. So that's something else that I want WeCreate to check out is the framing and then allowing it to go past this point to autofocus down to the board. Because if it can't autofocus, the, high, the higher your, your laser is from your wood, the more it's gonna burn because it has a larger beam and that's what causes that is burn marks there. So that's pretty much it. I wanted to share, you guys, share with you guys the fact that the hardware itself works, software still needs a little bit of improvements obviously, but I wanted to get this out to you guys to show you that it does work um, and it is on the way for everybody. Um, so I want WeCreate to be able to get this completely corrected for you guys. And once again, if it's something to do with this machine in particular or me in particular, I'll do that in the follow-up video too, but I'm 99% positive it is something within the beta software that's limiting it from going past that point so it doesn't crash into the trays itself. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was fun working on this. The machine itself, 100% awesome, 100% recommend it. The pass-through slot, all they gotta do is correct those two things in the software, and I think we're good to go. Other than that, um, if you have any comments, let, them, let me know down below, and I'll try and answer any questions that you have, like always, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.